All right. Welcome. And thank you for tuning in on the Healthy Runner podcast. We are live within the Healthy Runner Facebook group talking about how we can keep getting after it, staying fit, even if we're getting older and we've had a couple of children with Olympian Kerry Tullison. Welcome to the show, Kerry. Thanks so much for having me. This is great to be here, Dwayne. Oh, I am super, super excited about this. So for those of you who are not familiar with this amazing person right here. Kerry is a five-time NCAA champion, three-time national champion, and represented the United States in the 2004 Olympic Games. Kerry brings her fitness expertise and bubbly personality that you're going to see uh, to her widely popular See Tolly Run podcast, and I am more than humbled to have her come on live within our community. So in this episode, Kerry is going to talk about life after the sport, running and training through pregnancy, trying to run fast in a different way, staying fit while not putting in tons of mileage. So for those of you who are here within the Healthy Runner Facebook uh, live stream, can you do me a favor and just comment live? Let me know who is here. And those of you who are catching the replay, just comment replay in the uh, comment box. So Kerry, let's get started with our dynamic warm up, which is the first question we ask all our guests. So tell us where are you from and what do you do? Yeah, well, thank you. I'm from Minnesota. So I grew up in Dawson, Minnesota, which is a rural you know, farm country, USA, about three hours west of the Twin Cities. And now my husband and my three kids, we live in St. Paul, Minnesota. So kind of like right in between both downtowns, downtown Minneapolis and downtown St. Paul. Um, I am still in the running world. As you mentioned, I have a podcast called See Tally Run. I do a lot of broadcast work where I do track analyzing or um, I'm an analyst for road races, cross country, track, all kinds of fun things in the running world. I have youth camps. I have adult camps. I kind of just do everything, but I don't have to run fast anymore, Dwayne. Like that's the, that's the key. I don't have to run fast anymore if I don't want to. Um, but, you know, I'm just busy, busy in the sport and, you know, coaching and different, different things. I just got done coaching for moms on the run. I also help with rock and roll marathon. Um, you know, I just think you guys can find me on a lot of different you know, different places and doing a lot of things still in the running world. No, I, I see that you are all over the place. And I think that's pretty <laughs> amazing that, you know, you did this professionally and now you still, it seems like you still have that passion um, to be within the running community and help out in different ways. So I, I love, I love seeing that as opposed to like going into something either totally new and not you know, doing anything with the running or just being like tired of it and just like burnt out. No, I am never tired of it. Even if, you know, I, I don't care what speed runners are. I don't care, you know, what got them out the door or what their journey has been. I love hearing their journey, but it doesn't mean that you have to be an elite athlete. You know, I just think it's really cool to hear how everyone gets after life and figures out how to find this community. You know, I do believe this is a good community. I know we have work to do and, you know, that's always in, in any kind of community, but I think our community is super, super inspiring and welcoming and excited about life and being healthy. And um, so, yeah, I'm really thankful for it. Now, did you, because I know you went into kind of broadcasting, did you go to college at all for communications or anything like that? I did. So I went to Villanova University out in Philadelphia, and I have a major in communications with an emphasis in broadcast. They didn't have broadcasts at Villanova, but I did take a fifth year because I was injured. And that entire fifth year, I did an internship at two of the big stations out in Philly. So that was kind of how I could really hone in on that. And I also have a, I like to tell everyone this, but I have a minor in criminology. So Sometimes I think, you know, maybe I should get into the TV world of like, you know, I don't know, doing like hard solving cases and things like that. But um, no, I've, I've loved being on camera, behind the camera, in front of the camera, um, just kind of performing. And I think maybe that's where the running thing was really fun for a long time. I could perform on the track or on the roads, but now I get to perform in a different way and I still get that excitement and that passion and that drive and um, nerves and all that fun stuff that I don't get anymore when I'm racing. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I could I could definitely see that. So I think we had talked about this previously, but I come from the performing aspect of I used to be a dancer. Yeah. And, you know, that same feeling that I would get on stage. Um, and that's really what brought me to actually running um, because I needed to perform and challenge myself. Uh, so I can see how you've kind of pivoted from, you know, being a professional runner and then now still being in front of the camera and being able to kind of get that little excitement of, you know, going live and, and performing. For sure. I mean, I think that there's something about that. All of us have, you know, something that makes our heart go fast a little bit without even doing the activity. And for me, I think that has been sort of having that pressure of wanting to see how I can do it things and, and maybe letting everyone else see it as well. You know, like I find even now, like during the pandemic, when I've been at home, I don't quite get as passionate about things. And I don't quite get as excited to do my very best when I don't have somebody sort of holding me accountable. And I maybe learned that through sport. Um, but even where I grew up, you know, we had this small town. So we all were in our Christian singing group. We were all in the orchestra. We were all in the band. We all were in the choir. You know, we did things to, to help one another, but that kind of, it always made me bring my A game when I knew whether it was my parents watching my grandparents or, you know, millions of people like I did when I was racing at the Olympics. I just, I don't know. I like that. It's scary and it's hard, but I like having that sort of that pressure of performing. Yeah, no, and we're definitely going to get into that. But uh, those of you who are jumping on the live here, just let me know you're here. And um, if you guys are listening to the replay, let me know that you caught the replay. And as we go along today, feel free to drop any questions you have for Kerry in the comment box, and we'll do our best to kind of get to those during the interview. But really, I guess I should probably share how this all came about. And uh, the reason you are here today is I have kind of been a longtime listener of your podcast and have loved listening to the C Tally Run podcast during my runs, or even when I do yard work in the yard. I definitely like listening to podcasts to kind of keep me busy um, as I'm doing yard work. And we actually connected through from you, Ken, he came on uh, my show in episode 28 to share kind of energy for running, how to avoid hitting the wall with superstar Ken. Um, so that was a great episode and kind of had connected us and I had the pleasure of going on your show and we had a nice conversation about running injuries. Um, so for those of you who haven't check that out. I will definitely drop the link to that note on the C Tally Run podcast. It was episode 207, um, where we talked about running injuries, the common ones, how do we prevent them, specific exercises. Uh, we had a great chat and Kerry was nice enough to be able to come on here within Unity. I am super pumped to kind of get into this tonight and you know hear about really how you continue to get after it. Mm -hmm. and stay fit, you know, as a, a busy mom of three children. And I'm, I'm really excited about this. So thank you again for agreeing to come on tonight. Yeah, I was super excited to chat with you. You know, when you were on C Tally Run, we were, we were like, how do we not know each other? Because we were just <laughs> having a ball. It was so fun. I mean, not so fun to talk about injuries, but you know, it's part of the game. And you taught me a lot of things. And we talked about dancing and singing and doing all kinds of fun stuff. And obviously we touched on some running because we both love that. <laughs> Absolutely. So coming from someone who loves to watch the Olympics every four years, except during a pandemic year, of course, um, that we didn't get any Olympics this past summer. Um, can you just share with our audience kind of what your kind of what's like the Olympic story that you tell like all of your friends or like what was the coolest thing that you took away from the 2004 uh, games in Athens? Oh man, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think even my husband and I and you know my family. So I grew up, I'm the youngest of three girls. So I have two older sisters and we were super tight. So they came, their husbands came. My husband was obviously or obviously there with my mom and dad. So, um, you know, every now and then we'll just talk about the memories, but I think 
obviously putting on the USA gear was so special and it was a different time. Like I have been to world championships with, which are equally as exciting, but for some reason I felt like it wasn't just me putting this Jersey on anymore. Like it was my little town. And then it was, you know, the state of Minnesota. And then it was all of the U S and everybody that had helped me along the way, high school coaches, college coaches, my professional coaches. Um, so yeah, we talk a lot about the fun that went into it, but I think I, I do go back to towing the line and remembering that feeling. I remember my dad said, you know, when you line up, I want you to take a second and just realize what you've done. You know, like I made it, that was a goal of mine for so long and lots of injuries and illness and things along the way. And, you know, he said, just be happy you're there. And when the camera comes to you, smile, because that's your one shot to really get on there and, and to be happy about being on camera. And so I remember they were panning down, you know, as they were announcing our names and I just wanted to like say a prayer and just like, I was so nervous and scared, but I do remember, like I could hear my dad say smile. Cause you know what, that, that moment will forever be ingrained. And it was, and it was okay to smile. Cause it was super exciting. I just was so nervous. I knew how many people were watching at home and I was like, Oh, don't screw this up. <laughs> well, I, I guess the smile worked, right? Because from what I understand, Sports Illustrated might have rated you like one of the most oh beautiful my. athletes, right? Yeah, I so <laughs> look like it right now. Oh my. No, yeah, they did something like that. Uh, you know, they, they like to have these little contests or whatever you say here and there. And the funny thing is the three women in front of me all had these glamour shots they were on the cover of Sports Illustrated, all this stuff. And I think I had like a, a little bit of spit on my face or like a sweat drop. So my picture was like true grit. And there there's go. were, you know, all these beautiful shots. So I don't, I don't, my sisters say they were number two and three and my mom was number one. So that's how it goes. Cause they rated me number four. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that's too yeah. funny. Um, yeah. And for those who aren't familiar, um, with the 2004 Olympics, what event did um, you qualify for? I ran the 1500 meters. So hundred meters short of the mile um, was definitely not my event though, that I thought I was going to go to the Olympics in. Oh, I wow. thought I was going to make the 5k team and I finished sixth. And in the U S top three from each event, make the Olympic team. And I missed the team in that. And I came back and won the Olympic trials in the 1500. And you know what? you just take it. You don't care what you're going in. You just get to go and, or go. And, um, I was very thankful. Well, I'm sure that's a story that you can share, um, regarding resiliency, right? Especially with your kids. And it's like, you expected sure. to get the 5k, but you didn't, mm -hmm. but then you came back and, you know, you qualified for the 1500. That's amazing. Yeah, it was, it is. It's one that I do a lot of public speaking. And I actually didn't at the top of this say that I do public speaking, but I do. And I talk about that. Like, you know, I had run really well in the 5k going into the trials. I had run 1504. I had the Olympic standard in it. Um, and I think the 5k was one of the most competitive events that year. Uh, but I did have a little mental lapse. I remember the, the 5k is 12 and a half laps. And I went through with two and a half laps to go. And I was in third, I was ready. And that was where I was going to move, but I was getting tired because that's what happens in races. <laughs> and I remember just kind of having like a mental shift. Like I'm just going to relax for a second. And in that second, like three women went or two women went by me and you know, it, I couldn't recover. Like if anyone has run a race and you're kind of in the zone and you're hurting and you know, you got to move or you got to get ready to make your final push and people go by you. It's really hard mentally to have people go by you. And especially on the track, it's almost like if you don't recover fast from it, that that's, you know, the move and that move is done. And that's where competitors get people and they got me. So I did come back. I ended up pretty much leading the 1500 from start to finish, which my coach was like, do not lead that race. Do not lead, <laughs> sit and kick, sit and kick. But I led the whole thing. And he, I remember on my victory lap, he said to me, so excited, but he was like, you better be happy you won that race because you were not <laughs> supposed to lead it. So yeah, you know, you learn from everything. And I was thankful I had a 
I learned a really hard lesson, but I learned more so that you can be so tough and you can come back from disappointment. You know, you just got to want it. Oh, I love that. I love that. We can apply that to so many things in life, can't we? Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Yes. So now let's talk about life after the sport. Um, when did you initially decide to retire from running professionally? Well, I don't know if I've officially retired. <laughs> um, I love it. Yeah. I mean, I'm old now, so I get to now enter the new age group. So um, I still will run a race here and there, but yeah, I think after I had Ruby and my, my 10 year old, she's our oldest, I tried to come back, but my heart was just kind of not in it. And, you know, to be honest, that's one thing that I sort of kicked myself for, you know, rather than just taking maybe a little break to become a new mom and just to enjoy that, I sort of tried to get back into it. And because my heart wasn't in it, I thought I wasn't good anymore. And I think I just didn't have that passion that I needed. And I maybe could have just taken some time to figure it out and to figure out my new life as a mom. But I tried to come back. I didn't run very well in 2012. Um, and then I had Everett, my now seven-year-old. And I ran my first marathon when he was four months. And um, I started to kind of get going again. But then my life as a broadcaster really started to pick up. So, you know, not that the, those aren't excuses. It's just kind of how life, you know, was going. And Part of me thinks, why didn't I just relax and come back after Ruby? But then I also think it's okay. I now have this full career off of the track and, you know, doing different things. And I love it. It's just sometimes I'm like, could I have given it a few more really good years? <laughs> so I didn't, I never retired, but okay. um, I'm retired. Let's just say I am. <laughs> I'm it's too kind of where now. you're. <laughs> It's kind of where your career path uh, headed to. And is that extremely hard for someone who was a middle distance runner to train and run a marathon? I would imagine so. You know, um, I have to tread lightly with how I say this because, um, you know, I can hurt both sides, right? I would have to say the intensity that it takes to run the 15 and the 5K at the level that I did um, because I don't run the marathon at the level that I tried to run the 15 and the five. So for me, the intensity was far more, um, well, intense when I was doing my track stuff now running the marathon. Yeah. The, the distance is hard, you know, thinking about running for that long and running, you know, pretty hard for that long is scary, but I actually think I enjoy training for the marathon a little bit more. But I don't have a lot of really fast, you know, comparable times and things like that. So it's all sort of new to me. But, oh no, is the internet unstable? There we go. Now, now, okay. now I think we're Sorry. Good. No, that's <laughs> fine. So right now, I guess what is what do you train for? If you are going to run a race, what distance is your favorite or that you would jump in now? I do love running the marathons. Now I love a good, hard run, long run. If that, that pretty much is what I do all week now is I kind of rest up for a hard, long run. And then I rest up again and do another hard, long run. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll run. I kind of run like a hard 5k, maybe once every three months. And then mm -hmm. I'll, you know, train for a good, long, hard marathon, maybe once every four years, but I do the training for a marathon. I'd say the majority of the time, you know, my, I think you and I are, we'll get to this, but I, I don't run very many miles, but I like that long run. So I'm always kind of ready for a hard, long race if I want it. Mm -hmm. No, it makes sense. All right. And, and we have a bunch of kind of mother runners within our healthy runner community. And if you're here on the live, let me know if you're a mother runner, drop mother runner into the comment box um, and feel free to ask Carrie any of your questions. She yeah. is open and willing to answer anything that you have. Um, but for our mom runners within our healthy runner community and even soon to be 
soon to be moms. Um, what tips can you give about running and training through pregnancy? Yeah. I mean, obviously everyone is so different, right? I mean, there's a lot of athletes that have been running at the level I used to run at that you would think would just breeze through and, you know, pregnancy is pregnancy for every single woman. You know, it's, it's not any easier for somebody that is super, super fit or fast. You know, it's just how the body reacts to it. And for me, I was pretty lucky. Um, I did run up through the, you know, the entire pregnancy until I had my babies. But there were things that I kind of tweaked and I was willing to tweak. So I'd have to say what I did was every, every semester, <laughs> every trimester, excuse me. <laughs> you're still in college. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're at I, Nova still. <laughs> I am pretty much. Um, but every trimester, my mileage kind of dropped like a third. And every time I look back now at my pregnancy logs, it really is like that, especially so when I first got pregnant with Ruby, my first baby, I was running probably 90 miles a week. So in that first, yeah, in that first trimester, I was running maybe, maybe more like 70, but still a lot. But then the next one I would drop down and I was running what, like, I don't know, 30 to 40. And then again, that last trimester, I was down to 20, maybe 30 miles a week. So, you know, it didn't, it wasn't necessarily a third each time, but about that. And, um, I really enjoyed that last few months of just getting in four or five runs that were slower, shorter, but it still gave me that little something, you know, it gave me that extra pep in my step. I do tell women though, I went through those ebbs and flows of, you know, two, two weeks, maybe in like the fifth or sixth month where my body was really shifting, where I had to just back off. And I did go on the underwater treadmill or in the pool. And then I, I revisited running and I would highly recommend that. I think a lot of people just pack it in, you know, after four or five, even like closer to six months where their hips are really shifting and their psoas muscles, like their hip flexors and area down there where your body really is expanding. I think a lot of people think, you know, it's just done. Like I can't, I won't be able to run the rest of my pregnancy. I guess one piece of advice I just have to say is ride that wave of, you know, you might feel really good for two weeks, but then you might not be able to do it, but don't just pack it in. Keep going. If your doctor allows you, obviously if there's contract contracting or whatever, that's a different story. But for me, I kind of just would let, let my body shift. I might have a big weight gain or, you know, something like that but then I could get back into the groove of things again. So how far along did you run during your pregnancies? How far into the pregnancies? The entire way. Yeah. So like literally like a week or two before they were born. No, like the day. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, like the hour, the minute yeah. before I was in the hospital. Yeah. Like I actually video. ran to the hospital. <laughs> No, but I, I do highly recommend this too, because my, with Ruby again, I didn't have a GPS. I don't think at the time. And I did so many laps with her because she did come two weeks early. Um, but they wanted me to walk. So I was in labor for like, I don't know, 32 hours or something crazy. It was like ridiculous. And, um, but I bet I walked, I don't know how many miles in that maternity ward. And then mm -hmm. with Everett, I had a false alarm so, cause he was, I think he was 10 days late. Maybe, no, he was seven days late. Greer, our last was 10 days late. Um, but our, on a false alarm, I did track that I, I walked a 5k before they ended up sending me home. And then with Greer, I have on video, like me doing side lunges, things like that, because they, my kids never came. Like they yeah. took long time and I ended up having to get an epidural every single time. So I could end up having my babies because they just like to stay in there. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Ruby yeah. wanted to come early, but she didn't want to actually exit. She just wanted to like get everyone nervous. So, yeah. Okay. So you'll, you'll appreciate this um, labor and delivery story. I've never shared this one on the podcast, but if Yay! my wife ever listens to this uh to this one, she will uh, tell you guys the uh, true story. So like any kind of coach, right? You know, dad being the coach and, mm -hmm. you know, going through our, our first Olivia, when she was born, um, 
it was tough for her to, right. It was taking hours, right. So you're in there for hours and usually I'm used to eating a snack every, you know, three hours, right. You eat healthy, oh, right. Please don't tell me you were hungry. <laughs> so, so I brought my snack with me cause I didn't go to work. So I had my apple, right. That was my snack and I had oh, a little protein. Charlie bar. had like Twizzlers. <laughs> like he had like all these requests. It was the most like junk food city up in there. Okay. Carry on. Sorry. Yeah. So my wife is going through, you know, the labor pains and the contractions and here I am. Cause I'm like sweating, you know, I'm stressed too. Right. It's hard on the dads. And I'm like, all right, I got to get some sugar in me. Like I got to be there. You know, I got to be there for you. So I'm eating my apple and she's going through a contraction. You hear this like loud crunching and she just looks over at me with like the devilish face. The demons come out. She's like, put the apple away. And I was like, Okay. Yes. Yeah. No eating in the labor and delivery room, guys. Oh. Yeah, for any new dads out there. No, or, or how about dads. like taking a work call? So Charlie's an architect and he was talking to one of his builders and they were talking about dampers, <laughs> I think. And all I remember was having a contraction on, you know, whatever, what is it that they give you to have babies, like to go into labor, like they had to speed it up. I can't think of what it's called. Oh, like Pitocin, I believe. Yes, yeah, Pitocin. Yeah. I don't know why I've forgotten that because it's not fun. But anyway, <laughs> I was on Pitocin and I just remember trying to be quiet during, not that I was like, I mean, it's okay if you yell, because I did yell at some point, but I just remember going like, <laughs> and thinking I didn't want this builder to know that I was having a contraction on the other end of his phone call. And after that, I'm like, don't talk about dampers or whatever you're talking about ever again. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love it. I love it. Uh, sharing stories in the labor and delivery room on the healthy runner podcast. Now okay. I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you they're pretty awesome. Right. So I just want to give a little shout out to some people who are here on the live. Adam Donna's here. Brian's here. Sean is here on the live. Luke's here. Kat's here. Latoya is here. Andrea is here. Annie, thank you so much for joining. Coach Lou is here. Uh, CJ is here. Robin is here. David's here. Um, another David's here. Kathleen is here. What's going on? And Latoya says, hashtag mother runner in the house. <laughs> Annie is another mother runner. And Love our friend it. Matt Bach is here from UCAN. Thanks for joining Matt. <laughs> and he says hey, he loves Carrie. <laughs> oh, I love Matt too. He takes good care of me. All right. So now let's get into a lot of people in our community are like you and I, where we are in our middle aged here. We're in our forties. I mean, and... I'm just talking about semesters people. I'm still in college. <laughs> <laughs> and they might have children like you do. You have three children, as you mentioned. So how do you continue to try and run fast, but in a kind of a different way? Yeah, I sort of alluded to it. You know, I love to run, but I also have given a life to it. So for me right now, it's nice to be able to get out the door, but get home fast, help with my kids. You know, that was the one thing that I, and it's fine if people do this, you know, I'm not judging at all, but for me, because I have sacrificed a lot for the run already in life, I think I'm okay with shortening things up and just getting in like almost the bare minimum, except for one day a week. I do like to go for a long run. So I would have to say I run right now anywhere from 20 to 40 miles a week. And some people might think that's a lot, but for me, when you're coming back from, you know, a 90 to hundred mile week girl, which I did for so many years, um, that's a significant drop. So I do think there's something about a 20 minute run. I've always said, like, I want to like do something with the 20 minute run. Cause that for me, it gets you out there, you get your sweat on, you get home and it really doesn't take that long. Like you could seriously be ready for another meeting in 30 minutes. Like I can shower in two minutes and get ready to go. Um, but you know, for me, I think what I do is I run, you know, shorter amounts, but I run pretty hard probably four days out of the week. So, you know, you and I had talked, I've had a little bit of a sore knee this year and I do think it was from kicking the football. Yeah. Is that better by the way? <laughs> it's getting there slowly, good. but surely. Nice. Um, I'm a bad patient. I'm just going to tell you, I'm a really good runner. I like to run. You would <laughs> tell me, Carrie, you need to run more. I would listen. You tell me I need to do more, you know, prehab rehab, and I don't listen as much. Um, so 
That being said, I do love to run hard. I like to um, keep my mileage down, but have purposeful runs, you know, do an interval session, maybe once a week, do that long run once a week, and then have some fluff runs in there, but they're still pretty good. So that's my mentality and it's worked, you know, even for the mm -hmm. marathon, you know, I've stayed pretty healthy. Um, I've enjoyed it. Like it's not a struggle for me to get out the door. Uh, mm -hmm. I take two full rest days, usually a week where I do not, I don't do anything. I just have fun and do the things I don't have time for a lot of, a lot of times. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with my training. Nice. And are you currently right now, do you coach any clients at all? I do. I have clients that will come to me. I have, I have never really promoted it, but here and there people will say, Hey, will you coach me? And I will do that. So, um, you know, just private one-on-one -on -one and I've loved it. I've kept mm -hmm. it at a pretty small group, but you know, I'm always willing. And if there's any way I can ever help a runner, you know, I, I was joking about how that I'm slow now. I know that I'm not slow and I shouldn't say that because some people will be like turning her off right now, because that's not fair that she can still run decently fast. I know that I'm not slow, but I'm slower than I was. And, um, I think a lot of people at times think that I'm, you know, can be a little bit intense and scary because I have run at a different level, but over the years now coaching women or men to do their first 5k or to be able to just learn how to run, it's actually been really fun for me. And I think that's opened the door for me to coach all types of runners and walkers, to be honest. Yeah. And has that kind of following that formula of more rest days have you found that helpful even with your clients not just with yourself personally but have you found that as a pattern that has worked out uh, pretty well yeah I think so I mean I do know that when you're new to the sport and you might not know how to push through some of that pain or some of that um, discomfort that you know cardio work can give you and a run can give you, I think that's a little different. So I do have to tweak some of that. I think sometimes when you have a background like I do, or even like you have been a runner now for quite some time, we can get away with maybe not having to do quite as much, um, you know, throughout the week. Like I can run a four mile or a four day a week plan for a long time and get away with it because I have so many banked mileage from behind, you know, be, from the past. Um, so a new runner, I might need to get them out the door a little bit more, mm -hmm. not necessarily more intensity, but just to get them out there and get moving, get more into the routine. But yeah, so I, I take that into, you know, into consideration, but right now for me and for other parents and full-time, um, you know, people that are working full-time, I do think less is more a lot of times. So that's my mentality. If you mm -hmm. want somebody that's going to give you big mileage weeks, I don't know. I might be the one that talks you out of it. Yeah, no, I think that's a valuable um, lesson and principle you kind of talk about. And I do come into a lot of beginner runners who maybe, you know, want to run their first marathon. And then I ask them, you know, what has been your weekly mileage the last couple of months? And a lot of times people are jumping into programs with heavy mileage. And like you mentioned, they don't really have the, the mileage and the experience in their legs and in their running. And it does take time. And I'm more of a believer like, like you in that, you know, you should train properly and, you know, run a half marathon or maybe a couple before you actually run a marathon mm -hmm. uh, to do it safely. So you don't get injured. And, you know, there is something to be said when you do have the experience like you have, obviously, but even, you know, someone's been running five to 10 years, let's say they have the experience in their legs. They have the conditioning built up. They have some baseline running fitness where they mm -hmm. can, you know, jump into a little bit more aggressive runs or, um, you know, do a little bit more aggressive training plan. So I like, I like that you, mm -hmm. because I find that as a common kind of training error in a lot of runners who wind up getting injured. Yeah. So now let's yeah. kind of talk about and one of the things I love to do is go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was Which just one... going to say one of the things I love to do is have a little something within my long run. So I'll do like a workout within the long run. 
No. Why is this internet unstable tonight? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I heard the audio. So that was good. So you talked about doing a workout within your oh, long run. So when you mentioned, so are you talking about like hills yes. or doing some intervals in there or a tempo in the middle of your long run? Yeah, that's typically how I train people now. I really like having people, you know, they might have one interval session a week, but then they will, you know, add something into that long run, whether it's a broken tempo, which I call, you know, like something that's two by 15 minutes or, you know, two by 10 minutes with a five minute recovery in between. You know, I make those long runs purposeful. And then we also get close to that marathon pace a lot, a lot of times during the long run. And then you have those days to recover. So yeah, I mean, I have a tendency to have like one or two hard days a week and then lots of recovery in between. Because <laughs> let's face it, we need it. Absolutely. Indeed. Um, so how else do you stay fit as a kind of busy working mom while kind of not putting in this ton of mileage. So what else do you do? I don't do very much, Dwayne. <laughs> I do some strength work. Um, you know, I think that the way that I train, um, it is intense at times. And, you know, I do a lot of running pretty close to marathon pace, which a lot of people might be like, what? But um, it, you know, I ran my last marathon at 630 pace. Mm -hmm. my, a lot of my runs are a little bit slower, but anywhere from like 645 to seven minute pace. And that would be either a three mile run or a 20 mile run. So it's just off of my marathon pace. So that's why I need to recover. I need to have those two full rest days because a lot of my runs are, are pretty hard, but they're short. You know, like I said, I have that one long run every week, usually right now in the winter here, I haven't done anything over eight miles in probably two months, but I'll get back into it. And then for about nine months, I'll be doing a long run every weekend. So yeah, I don't do a lot of that, um, you know, other stuff, no cross training, really. Um, I will do some strength work. Like I said, I'll do a little bit of core here and there, but I am busy you know, and I know everybody else's. And the other thing for me is I would rather sleep an extra 30 minutes than add in more. And that's just me right now. That's just where I'm at. I am exhausted from the day every day. And so mm -hmm. if I can sleep until 630 rather than getting up and just dragging through something, I'm going to do that. I think kind of what you're talking about as I'm listening to you is I think a great lesson for everyone. It really seems that you've listened to your body and you've trialed different, you know, runs, training, sleep, rest. And it seems like you found your sweet spot and how much rest you need, how many days you need to run. And you're listening to your body and those cues and, and, it's kind of like, you know, whatever we do, we reflect back and figure out what works. And I think that's a valuable lesson for a lot of runners, especially because as runners, we tend to be type A and we're like, I'm going to follow the plan. This is the best plan. And my friend did this plan and they got a PR and I need to do this plan. That plan might not be best for your body. Right. So what Carrie's talking about is really kind of listening to those cues and kind of trial and error, uh, you know, kind of practice, right? Practice and put something into action. But it sounds like you've really and and you could tell how you how you're talking about this too, that like you are like good, like where you are right now um, with yeah. your training. And obviously you're busy with the kids, and you know, that's your kind of focus right now, right? They're only going to be young for so long. Like exactly. my daughter just turned 15 yesterday, like 15 years, boom, just went by just like that. And now that she's in high school, you like, whoa, they're going to be like out of the house soon, you know? I know. And I know. it's crazy. It is crazy. And I do think that's exactly right. Like you nailed it. Like I'm consistent. Consistency is key. I don't take, you know, a week off. I don't take two weeks off randomly, if I'm on a busy trip, I will, but I still will touch in or I'll get a touch of some running or something. So my body isn't totally away from activity, but I do think like, maybe it's because my PR days are gone. 
<laughs> that I'm okay with it. Some of the athletes out there are like, but I want a PR and that's great. And I can train people that way. And I know if my coach who coached me through all those years really wanted, you know, to help me to run a 240 or a 245, I know we have places to go. I know what I could do. I could add mileage. I could get more um, serious about you know, my lifting and my stretching and all these little things that I used to do, I could get serious and do it. But right now I'm okay. And I also am kind of pulled in so many directions with, you know, being a fitness instructor and doing all these other things. I have to stay healthy. So I can't pour on the miles. I can't do strength work three times a week right now because I'm leading different workouts and things like that. So, um, and I'm like punting the ball like every day to my son. <laughs> so I have to stay healthy because this is, I'm working new muscles and I'm injuring myself because of that. But guess what? Pump that ball every day, even if it hurts, because he's asking, he's like, mom, can you come pump the ball? And I'm like, yes, I can. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, no, you are, you are all in. And I agree with you. Consistency is key. That's, you know, one of my mottos as well. And how important mm -hmm. it is to help prevent like running related injuries is that consistency. So I love that you talked about that. So now we're getting into the final stretch here, Carrie. So this is like where you're getting that little kick, okay. right? That on, on the track there, bringing back your glory days back in Athens. Um, so if you could change one thing about the misconception of running, what would that be? Mm, more is better. <laughs> I mean, we just talked a lot about it. I really think that, you know, if I could go back a little bit in my professional days, I would listen to my body a little bit more. Um, I would be okay with those rest days. I used to take one day off a month and do nothing. And I thought, oh my gosh, like that nobody else does that. And I wish I would have maybe done it a little bit more. Maybe it was one every 10 days or something like that. But now when I look back at my, the years that I've run, I've been so healthy since having kids because I have taken days off or I have done a three mile run versus an eight mile run on certain days. And I just think that that's so important for people to understand that more isn't always better. You know, it's, um, can be fun and it can really kind of boost your esteem. Like, oh my gosh, I, you know, put in an 80 mile week, but now I can't run for three months. <laughs> um, you know, you got to find that hot spot, like you talked about. And for me right now, it's, you know, averaging 30 miles a week and enjoying it. And then really kind of focusing in on that long run, I think is so crucial when you're doing a half marathon and marathon. So make that be the highlight of your week and recovery from it. Love it. Love it. So for those of you who are just tuning in now, we are talking with Olympian Carrie Tullifson and we talked about kind of life after the sport in, earlier in this episode. We talked about running and training through pregnancy. We talked about running fast in a different way and talking about not running as many days and allowing for those recovery days. Um, so not needing to put in tons of mileage. So I'm sure there will be many runners out there who learn something um, from you today and what if they want to learn more about, I know you kind of mentioned, maybe you could speak to this a little bit of some of the running clinics. I think I saw on your website, some of the running clinics that you're doing for kids. Can you talk about that a little bit? What yeah. So I have a, a youth camp every year. It's usually like the weekend after the 4th of July. It's called the Carrie Tullison training camp. We got pretty, you know, creative with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we didn't get to have it last year, unfortunately. And, um, but we're hoping to have it this year. We're still waiting to hear if they're going to host events at the college that we have it at, but yeah, seventh through 12th graders, um, welcome to come, but I have had adult camps. Um, I am the national fitness director for moms on the run. I help with well beats, which if you check with your insurance or your employer, a lot of people get it. And well beats is, um, a virtual platform where you can do all kinds of different you know, exercise workouts, but I do a running workout on their strides channel where we actually, the cameraman follows me on trails and I talk you through your workouts. It's super fun. Um, so there's a lot of things that I'm doing in the running world where you guys can, 
learn more from me if you want to, or just, you know, say I'm crazy and do the exact opposite. I don't know, <laughs> but I'm on social media at Carrie Tellison, also at C. Tolly Run, where my podcast is. And I'm just an email or a direct message away from anyone that has any questions because this sport has given me a lot and I want to be able to give back in any way I can as well. That's amazing. And I appreciate, and I actually vividly remember this, that I actually sent you a DM over the summer, because I remember I was doing yard work and I listened to an episode you had and I loved it. And I sent you a DM and was just like, Hey, I just want to, you know, connect. Like, I love the episode that you had. And then like, I remember you responded. I was like, wow, she responds. And <laughs> yeah, I thought that was awesome. I thought like, you know, I was just some well, nobody, you know, who was sending you a message and you, you like responded. Yeah. And I thought that was great. Well, you know what? I would rather respond to people like that than to figure out when I need to post and how many posts I'm doing. I'm not that girl. Like I throw up a post here and there, but I'd much rather be interacting with people than, you know, doing other things. So please, by all means, if anyone needs anything, I'm here for you. Oh, I love that. And that's that I've definitely have uh, seen that myself, um, with social media and, and getting more in the DMS and just having connecting with people. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, just because that's why we do what we do, right. It's exactly. just to connect, connect with others, um, as opposed to just putting out, you know, tons of content. Um, so guys, for those of you who are here on our Facebook live here, if you guys enjoyed any of this conversation with Carrie, please hit that like, hit the love button. Uh, it will just help more runners within our community be able to see this video pop up on their feeds. And uh, also to appreciate, you know, Carrie for taking time out of her busy schedule that we know she has. Um, but I'm going to try to convince her to get a little bit more of her foam rolling in and maybe some prehab work. We're going to see if we can we can answer to find a little more time stuff. <laughs> I do. I need it. Like I need you to be just in my ear every day. Like, Hey, I'm 10 minutes right here. It doesn't take that long. I know that. And you know, what's funny is my kids now, because I've done so many, you know, workout videos or live videos, whatever they're picking up on that. So like every day they're like, Hey, you want to work out? And so they're doing these little workouts and you know, it's so important for them to be stretching and to, we have a million foam rollers. So I need to just get down on the floor and do a little bit more. So, Hey, that's the news. That could be a slogan. Get down on the floor and do a little bit more. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> get down on the floor and do yeah. a little more. Yes. <laughs> there you go. So I'm going to have to slide into your DMS again and just be like, get down on the floor and do Please. a little more. <laughs> there we go. And get after it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, thank you so much, honestly, Carrie, for taking the time uh, to share with our community. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time tonight. I appreciate you with everything that you do. You're always willing to hear from everybody too. And thanks for keeping us healthy. My goodness. I just got to oh, quit oh. punting the ball. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So thank you guys who jumped on the Facebook live. We're listening on the podcast and those of you who caught the replay um, within our healthy runner Facebook group or the spark your training YouTube channel. I thank you guys very, very much. Remember every Monday night, 8 PM, we go live within the healthy runner Facebook group. So keep us in mind in your schedule so you can get your questions answered. Thanks again, guys. Remember, stay active, stay healthy, and just keep running until next time.